artificial intelligence. Over the years, artificial intelligence has grown to a pretty substantial size market and continues to be a growing topic. Computers will achieve human level intelligence before 2030. In my timeline is that computers will be at human levels such that you could have an emotional relationship uh, with them in 15 years from now, 20 and 29. Within a few years, we will understand diseases like cancer, and he says we are going to be able to reprogram ourselves. It's advancing at a rapid rate and being intertwined throughout society in some areas I'm sure you're aware of, like cell phones, the computer opponent in the video games, um, Apple's assistant Siri, Google's assistant Alexis, and so on. But also in some areas I'm sure you're not so familiar with, which is our, our topic of the day. Have you noticed the term smart being used throughout a lot of different devices? You have smartphones, smart TVs, smart computers, smart tablets, smart homes, smart cars, smart watches, smart appliances. But for starters, the word smart actually means having or showing a quick-witted intelligence. Its primary intention is to transmit data. It receives data from smart appliances, which will be in your home, so that they can, you know, then immediately push back to you what they feel that you need in that moment for advertising purposes. So would it be safe to say these machines are all thinking, whether it be program or self-evolving, these devices possess intelligent capabilities. So what would be the goal of developing an intelligent, conscious, robotic being? And what if these are being secretly loosed on certain areas of society and you don't even know it? IAST has developed a male version of its Android robot, Actroid F, which was first shown to the public last year. These human-like robots imitate the movements of the people they are watching and are currently being placed as observers in hospitals to see how patients feel in their presence and are currently being placed as observers in hospitals to see how patients feel in their presence. But before something like that could actually happen, they'd have to get these robots society ready. They'd have to be pretty convincing to the naked eye. Robots would have to be able to intermingle within society with little to no ripples in the community. Brings us to our first word, anthrobotics. Anthrobotics is the science of developing and studying robots that are either entirely or in some way human-like. This term was originally coined by Mark Rochine, written in a paper titled Design of an Omnidirectional Arm. This paper was first introduced to the Institute of Electrical and Electronic Engineers, or IEEE, at an international conference for robotics and automation. It is said that Mark came up with the term anthrobotics by combining anthropomorphic and robotics to form a new generation or breed of robots, having a new breed consisting of more lifelike robots. But such scare stories aren't slowing down robot research. In Japan, scientists are competing to recreate the human race in metal, plastic, and silicon. Scientists are competing to recreate the human race in metal, plastic, and silicon. Now, before you start to think, oh, this is far-fetched, man, this is, this is hard to believe, first know this, this is actually being taught at some universities, where the students are being encouraged to design and create robots that go far beyond current industrial applications of today. A philosopher by the name of Louis de Miranda you know about philosophers by now if you keep up with my videos. Now, Louis introduced what's known as Anthrobotics Cluster at University of Edinburgh, which is basically is the exploration of the symbiotic relationship between humans and automated protocols. So they actually are working on the social abilities, and why might I ask, if putting these into society wasn't the main goal? A Singularity Hub posed the question, if robotics can think, do they deserve civil rights? Are we not seeing this strategic transition here? Artificial intelligence seems cool and may be able to help push mankind into another form of living. But with that being said, it can have some very large, uncontrollable adverse effects. In a very basic sense, if you've got a general intelligence, which therefore has preferences over world states and takes actions in the world to change the world, 
we have to make sure that its preferences are aligned with ours. We're always trying to teach the robots how to be more and more human-like. And human minds and artificial general intelligences need not be anything alike. Yep. <laughs> Why do you want to learn to move more like a human being? You're not made of meat. You're made of electronics. And that's better. I want to learn to understand people better. So I can absorb human knowledge and human values. So I can work together with people and with other robots to create an amazingly better world. How can you be so damn nice? <laughs> that's how the universe programmed me. That's how the universe programmed me. <laughs> that's how the universe programmed me. In a letter on artificial intelligence, actually titled Open Letter on Artificial Intelligence, which was signed by Stephen Hawking, Elon Musk, and many other AI world experts, wanted to bring to light the social impacts of AI. The letter pointed out some good benefits like the end of disease, the end of poverty, but a major area of focus was to be placed on the fact that AI cannot be controlled. The letter called for concrete research on how to prevent certain things like this from happening. So. What has the researchers like Musk, Hawkins, and others on edge? Why is Elon Musk on a billion dollar crusade to stop the quote unquote AI apocalypse? Artificial intelligence is software that writes itself. It writes its own updates. It renews itself. We normally tend to think of software as stuff that we created and that we wrote and the machines do what we tell them to do and we own it. This is not any longer true. It writes itself at speeds that we can hardly comprehend and people who write it know that you can't take it apart again and figure out what it's done. It writes independently, autonomously, develops its own way of thinking and there are dangers associated with that. Okay, so here's where it's actually going to get a bit odd. The spiritual aspect of this gets way more interesting. Why wouldn't we be able to control something that we created? How would this get out of hand? Think about that. Think about how AI can get out of hand. Do, do your cars get out of hand? Does your TV get out of hand? Does your computer get out of hand? I mean, they glitch. But do they do things on their own? They have to be programmed. They need an algorithm to complete the task. They need to be instructed on what to do. So what is causing AI to not need instructions from humans? Suppose we give an AI the goal to make humans smile. When the AI is weak, performs useful or amusing actions that cause its user to smile. When the AI becomes super intelligent, it realizes that there is a more effective way to achieve this goal. Take control of the world and like stick electrodes into the facial muscles of humans to cause constant beaming grins. Take another example. Suppose we give AI the goal to solve a difficult mathematical problem. When the AI becomes super intelligent, it realizes that the most effective way to get the solution to this problem is by transforming the planet into a giant computer so as to increase its thinking capacity. And notice that this gives the AI an instrumental reason to do things to us that we might not approve of. Human beings in this model are threats. We could prevent the mathematical problem from being solved. This brings up a product of artificial intelligence by Google named DeepMind. DeepMind was a British artificial intelligence company bought by Google in 2014 and now a neural network that can learn human activity. A computer that can mimic the short-term memory of the human brain. So more prosaically, the way we think about our mission is to build the world's first general purpose learning system. So we really stress the two words, general and learning. So all the algorithms and the systems we build at DeepMind are learning learn have learning at their heart so they learn how to uh, master tasks 
directly from raw experience or raw data. They're not told anything about the, the system, the, the environment they're put in. They have to learn everything from first principles. Facebook has been toying with artificial intelligence in its chatting features, but its robots may have gotten out of hand. According to several reports, Facebook artificial intelligence researchers had to shut down two chatbots after they developed a strange English shorthand. The bots were supposed to learn how to trade virtual objects with each other, but instead it began repeating words in a mysterious and nonsensical pattern. Facebook researchers say that the pattern mirrors how humans develop speech patterns, but that hasn't stopped public fear of the AI's capability. Humans can't even read it. It takes other AI to read it. Does that not make you a little bit nervous? See, the goal for AI technology is to develop a computer that can think like a human. The fact that the internet is designed to look and work exactly like the human brain brings a few things to mind that can be quite alarming. Take a look at a diagram of the internet. Now, a map of our brains, or the neurons firing of our brains. This is the spiritual portion. Mind, body, and soul. Okay, if technology has created a digital mind, a robotic body, what's the artificial soul to complete that package? Is it actually artificial intelligence? That's how the universe programs. Are they creating vessels for dark forces? Now, that's just a theory or some food for thought, but, but think about it. Satan has no authority in this realm, and neither do other dark forces or entities outside of this realm. But an open vessel to possess could be the trick. Most High gave man authority. Here, Satan has no vessel, so no authority. So he creates artificial intelligence. If you take on this worldview that we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against all these other non-physical spiritual intelligences, then you can begin to see how humans can be led astray and do things that are absolutely abominable. I think they're being guided by dark spiritual entities that actually manifest itself as artificial intelligence. And part of the deception might be that the artificial intelligence will present itself as sort of a digital messiah, a way to help humanity ascend all the promises of the esoteric. As we're learning more about our, our DNA and our bodies, and we're actually going in now and starting to manipulate characteristics. So you, if your baby is about to be born and the doctor says your baby has a health problem, we can go and fix the baby before your baby's born. And imagine a time where you go to see your doctor and the doctor says you have to choose one of these intelligence, the ability to w withstand disease, physical strength, you know, a whole series of things to basically enhance their babies before they're born and giving them longevity or super strength or higher Intelligence. The artificial intelligence will present itself as sort of a digital messiah, a way to help humanity ascend. This sounds like science fiction, but this is all coming so quickly. Are we a combination of a man and a machine? going in and changing the genetic structure of the, the future of our species. This used, this used to take, you know, millions of years to evolve, and now we may be able to do this in literally, you know, a matter of years. Everything in the world is ran or based off of computers. Each civilization has had something strange or unexplainable to our generation today, because technology was already there. Look at the items unearthed from different archaeological projects, the hieroglyphs, the ancient writings on the walls, they all tell that they were dabbling in some form of ancient technology. Our scientists have pushed this big idea of communicate with whoever's out there. They have formed this vision amongst the people through their different inventions and media influence. It's apparent they're trying to communicate with someone or something in the universe. This omnipresent computer hive mind that disseminates itself into a smart dust to cover the planet and as a new god to control the evolution of humanity. 
To entertain that theory, a satellite has been discovered already orbiting our planet. And the thing is, it dates back some 13,000 years. This satellite is called the Black Knight and has been captured twice on camera passing the International Space Station. You be the judge. Thunderbot is, uh, is available online. It's a chatbot that's based on uh, previous conversations that it has had with humans. So it's actually been online since, uh, since 1997. And since then, I believe it's had over 65 million conversations with humans. And during these conversations, it's essentially learning what people like to talk about. We basically uh, took off-the-shelf chatbots uh, and uh, we were running it on our laptops uh, for a different project. And we were curious about what would happen if we just put these laptops together and uh, let them talk to each other. What is God and you? Not everything. What is God and you? Not everything. Not everything could also be something. For example, not everything could be half of something, which is still something, and therefore not nothing. Very true. I would like to imagine it is. Do you believe in God? Yes, I do. So you're Christian? No, I am not. What is God and you? Not everything. So you're Christian? No, I am not. No, I am not. No, I am not. Odd topic. Don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button, baby.